My name is Omar Estrada Torres. Um, I have been with the university for the last four years. Um, I have served in the capacity as the Associate Dean of Students here, um, responsible for upholding our community expectations through our Code of Student Conduct, um, but I also work to help students um, with different types of needs, whether they be physical, emotional, or spiritual, um, and help them get acclimated and transition to the university environment. I think part of the reason that attracted me to to this particular reading is because I studied a lot in college about different types of civil rights movements. And so I labor faithfully came to my head immediately because uh, I knew it was from the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, the story, though, caught my attention even more. How Jordan starts off the conversation with his former master and basically saying, look, I hope you're okay. I really do wish the best for you. You know, I loved being in your house. I don't let anyone talk bad about you. However, if you want me to come back into your home, I do feel that it's appropriate that you compensate me and my family for the years upon years of service that we have faithfully given to you and your family. Thinking about it in today's world with all the many civil rights types of issues that are going on today, um, it, it was both personal and realistic for me. Personal for me because I grew up in a Puerto Rican household in New York City. Um, no one went past the high school education. Um, my grandmother herself, who was the first immigrant from Puerto Rico to New York City, along with my great grandmother, worked all her life, practically about 35, 40 years in a sweatshop. And you know, I sympathize with Jordan from a perspective of, he, he doesn't have any ill will towards others, even though ill will was perpetrated on him and his family. The fact that, again, he didn't turn around and become agitated, that his old master would then turn around and be like, look, I need you to come back into this house and keep our house afloat. No. He said, I would be happy, I would be honored to come back into your house and to keep it together as a family as you once welcomed me. However, I do want to do it reasonably, and part of that reasonableness is that you compensate me and my family for everything that we've done to keep your house afloat. Um, that, that was very touching and, you know, made me think a lot more about how much we as a society haven't moved far from that in terms of how we really need to be fair and faithful to others um, and how that really strikes a chord with a lot of the things that are going on in our society today with regards to immigration reform, um, with regards to education access, um, and the ability for people and students to be able to afford education um, at colleges and universities today. I think that that's, you know, this particular message is very profound and speaks a lot to those respective movements.